Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a video from Resin Cells and Rubber and Yarns. We are going to talk to you today and give you a spinning wheel update. So, we are spinning on the Ashford Elizabeth II. This is the spinning wheel I have been spinning on for quite a few years now. The spinning wheel I used before this and the one that I, my first wheel that I used to spin on, was an Ashford Kiwi, the original Ashford Kiwi. Now, the wheel I had. I ended up getting a, um, I think it was like a jumbo or a super jumbo or something, flyer, and that was great. I can make irons. It was a very portable wheel. However, it was a slow, the way I had it set up, it was a slow wheel, and it, um, it just really wasn't the sort of tool for the type of yarn that I really wanted to make. Now, there are things you can buy to make your Ashford Kiwi um, more uh, to spin, for example, a more consistent fine yarn. However, I really wanted a tool that was from onset designed for, for spinning the sort of uh, fiber and yarn I, I wanted to spin. So in past videos you may have heard me mention and discuss and talk about the um, Spin Illusion, the Monarch. So the Spin Illusion Monarch is a wheel that is uh, was kind of on my list, kind of on the things that I was interested in. And the reason I was interested is because it had a lot of flexibility. Uh, flexibility in the type of yarns it would spin and it was uh, it's a production wheel. And of course I spin a lot of yarn. I make a lot of yarn. And so a wheel that is really designed, intentionally designed for someone who produces a lot of yarn, for who spins a lot of yarn, was something, of course, that it, you know, made sense for me. Well, I hadn't seen one in person until last weekend. First time in my life I saw a Spin Illusion Monarch in person. Now, with this wheel, it does an excellent, excellent, excellent job for the sort of yarn that I want to spin. Very, very good. However, portability is an issue. This is not a portable wheel. And the flexibility of this wheel is also an issue. By flexibility, I mean, if I want to spin our yarn, bulky our yarn, this wheel is not set up to do that. The, in fact, by its design, with these little hooks right here, there's only so much yarn, and with this small orifice right here, there's only so much yarn that can fit through this without getting stuck. So this wheel has, it has limitations, the way it's set up currently for the type of yarn that I can produce. So I did the research and looked at the Spin Illusion. I looked online, read about it, all sorts of stuff, watched videos, but I saw one in person, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I didn't just go off and buy this wheel, the Spin Illusion, that is, Monarch because it is an expensive wheel, especially with all the little additions that I wanted to purchase with it, the extras. And the wheel was huge. I didn't even want to sit and spin at it because it didn't fit my criteria. I already have this large wheel. I was looking for a more portable wheel. That simply wasn't it. However, I was able to view one of the bees, the queen bee, worker bee, king bee. I don't know which one it was because the person, the people who were with the wheel didn't know which wheel they had, which is kind of difficult for me. I, I didn't, I wasn't able, it was all collapsed, so I wasn't able to just see. But I didn't spin on that. But it really, because I wanted to go home and I wanted to stop and really consider and think about things. And that's something that I encourage people to do is to take your time. We really live in a world that everything is fast do everything fast, everything now, everything, in fact, if you could have done it yesterday, you should have done it yesterday. That's the rooster. Speaking of other animals, I'm spinning our alpaca. This is Maske. She's a Wakaya alpaca. She's four years old. And um, this is the fiber. It's true black, not dyed, naturally look just like this and it's available if you go to our spinners uh, spinner surprise box at razzledazzlerabbitry.com you'll get three ounces mailed to you in the month of September. So that's what this fiber is. 
And if you did get your fiber, by the way, the way I prepared this is I took an ounce and I hand carted the one ounce into roll eggs and then I'm spinning it and I will apply it back on itself, like so, and make a two-ply yarn. So that's what we're going to make with this. But back to the spinning wheel conundrum. Now, if you're watching this, you may think, well, just have multiple wheels. However, you will also remember that that's not in my makeup. That's not in my design. That's not in my way of living. I don't want multiple wheels to have to take care of. I don't want multiple wheels to have to store. I don't want multiple wheels to have to invest in at all. Because I'm of the firm belief that the things we own, well, they own our time and they own our attention and they own our money, they own our resources. They own more of us than what we truly do of them. What do I mean by that? I've talked about that before, so. I mean, this wheel requires attention. It requires me to, to uh, oil it. It requires me to keep it clean. It requires me to uh, change the, the drive band. It requires me to change just many different things. Keep the screws tight. Keep the wheel functioning properly. Ever so often, change the footman. Whatever is needed. The wheel also has to be uh, stored. It requires space. The things such as spinning wheels that are big tools are also expensive and they eat up money. If you're doing this as a hobby and you have infinite resources or a lot of resources, then that's not something that you might need to worry about. But if you're somebody who pays attention to your finances or you have slightly limited finances and you can't simply buy every single spinning wheel you want, then choosing your spinning wheel, of course, is important. There's a little bit of lump, but I'm just going to leave it. And this yarn, I don't mind a little bit, provides interest. And anyways, so I don't want to own multiple yarn. Uh, multiple spinning wheels. I do want to own multiple yarns, but I don't want to own multiple spinning wheels because I don't want to have to care for them. I don't want to have to have the investment and um, I want life simplified, which is asking a lot because of the spinning wheel. You know, certain, like I said, certain wheels, they have their advantages. Some are more portable than others. Some are designed to be exceptionally portable. Some are designed to go on airplanes. This one is certainly not. So that's just the update, um, and that really was a lesson and shows the value of seeing a wheel, being present with the wheel before making the decision to buy it. That's uh, definitely important. This one, by the way, I wasn't present with it, I didn't see it before I bought it. The Ashford Kiwi, I wasn't present before it was purchased. However, in this particular case, after getting some experience with spinning wheels, it does become valuable to, to really set your eyes on the, on the wheel and to really be physically present with the wheel, to have an idea of it, does it fit your requirements? Does it fit with what you want the wheel to fit? Is it going to be able to fill those shoes? Or is it something that you might need to pass on and continue your, your search or even perhaps better, to lay your search down. And I often think about possibly uh, setting up for spinning lessons to teach people to spin, which would require either they bring their wheel or I have a supply wheel. Well, having one wheel makes it slightly difficult to have lessons because it would have to be on this wheel. And this isn't the easiest wheel to learn how to spin on because of the yarn that it creates. Uh, the Ashford Kiwi is a very good wheel to learn how to spin. How to spin on. However, that's what we're talking about today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Where I found the wheel was the Wisconsin, the, where I saw the Spin Illusion was the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival this past weekend. So uh, definitely type that into a search engine of your choice. Take a look at it. Why was I at the Sheep and Wool Festival? Well, because I had to pick up three sheep. 
very important. So you guys, uh, those of you who are members of the channel, you'll be able to see that. Thanks for watching.